Welcome to another dimension, a dimension of insight, a dimension of understanding. You are entering a place where reality collides with truth. There are no limits, there are no boundaries. This is off planet radio. This program is brought to you by our sponsors at Patreon who do support us. Um, the website is patreon.com forward uh, yeah patreon.com forward slash off planet media someday i'll get that right this next section um we're going to go into this gosh what the last two weeks have done in terms of raping the mentality of people in the united states and even even around around the um well not around across <laughs> You just almost invalidated your own narrative. See how they trap you? You see how they trap you. They trap you in linguistics and sigils and word magic and spells. So where to begin with the whole Kavanaugh thing, except to end it by saying he got on the court. I predicted he would get on the court. They pulled a trump card. (laughs) <laughs> by doing exactly what they did with Clarence Thomas. They brought forward somebody who impugned the nominee with his past history in a sexual way, which obviously the minute you bring any kind of sex into this, any kind of um, inappropriate behavior, shall we say, that casts a pall over the whole proceeding. And so they were able to color it. They were able to cover a lot of things. They were able to prevent questions that should have been asked and points that should have been raised to not be raised. And instead, they had shouting matches, which fragmented the consciousness of everybody who was in this circle jerk of rooting for one side or the other. We had the leftist social justice warriors and the Me Tooers and anybody that's ever been offended in any way on one side and then the other side you had the right wing the trumpites the alt right the qAnon crowd all staging out the argument for Kavanaugh now First and, off, and, let's and, and for all the wrong reasons, right? Like everybody, all the it, wrong reasons. It became about so the reason not to have him, of course, became about sexual misconduct rather than the fact yeah. that he's an enemy of freedom. And then the you know, like when he got in there, it's like, yay, we've you know restored due process. Really, he wants due process for you, but not for the people who are you know held with indefinite detention and all that kind of stuff. Well, I mean, that's so, where this is. That's where this is they, all. Yeah, they're getting everybody to beg for their own enslavement. This right? is much more yeah. dark and cynical than anybody realizes. Yeah, totally. And I could care less who sits on the court. To be quite honest, if you're going to the Supreme Court, praying to the court for your rights, and I don't care what it is, I don't care whose rights it is whether it's same-sex marriage or abortion or anything else, you're already a slave because the whole government has been totally co-opted, not since 1861, but since the beginning. I've looked at the documents in Jamestown that founded the first colony. It was a corporate charter for profit. It's all it's ever been. It's just a big fucking slave colony on steroids now. So my initial response to the nomination of Kavanaugh, when I looked at who he was, and I did, was this. Let's share the screen here again. Uh, Our screen sharing skills are a little slow sometimes, mainly because I've got to dodge around the screen here. In an interface. And um, so here's the snapshot. These are the Supreme, present, presently sitting Supreme Court justices as of 
last week, um, the week of, what was it, October 7th? We'll take it from there. He was sworn in on October 6th, I think. They swore this guy in fast. I mean, this was a fast process. So here's the, ma the makeup of the Supreme Court as of uh, October 2018. And this is the makeup of the court. As you can see, we have a preponderance of Roman Catholics sitting on the court. Actually, what, one, two, four, five, five, six nominal justices. Gorish was raised Roman Catholic. He now attends Episcopal, an Episcopal church. That's nominally Catholic as well. But so he would probably lean on either side, but he's a, he's a Freemason. So that trumps, the, why do I keep saying that word? That, that actually overrides the loyalties on other sides. Just remember something. Freemasonry is a common bond with almost all of these people. And I, I think, I can't find an exception, maybe Ginsburg. But with the preponderance of Roman Catholics, you then have three people who are Jews. And I say religious Jews as opposed to Zionists. I mean, no disrespect from that. Um, we all know and love certain Jewish people, and I don't have a problem with them being Jewish. I have a problem with their Zionists. So that's the makeup of the court, <clears throat> largely appointed by two of the Bushes, and then Obama, Clinton, and Trump. Um, the, the ruling gang, that's just as interesting to look at as the nominees, really, is to look at um, how long some of the, these have sat on the court. Clarence Thomas has been there since 1991, and it was in his confirmation hearings. Who was that? Anita, what was her name again? So I don't get it wrong. Anita Hill. Anita Hill. When they rolled out the Anita Hill thing. And see, that was designed to hide the fact that Clarence Thomas was a corporate lawyer <laughs> for, oh, Monsanto. Gosh, who saw that coming? We get down here and we begin to look again at these guys and where they matriculate from. Uh, no surprises, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Columbia. Uh, interesting, Clarence Thomas went to Holy Cross. Not That's exactly. the only one in there that isn't an Ivy League school. But he graduated from Yale. Right. So Yale and Harvard control the Supreme Court in terms of their higher matriculation and also and just Columbia in there their well. fraternities, which in Yale's case would be skull and bones, most likely. But Kavanaugh is very much in the pocket of the Jesuits, having gone to Georgetown Prep and then Georgetown University before going on to Yale to get his law degree. And as was Neil Gorish. Neil Gorish also went to Georgetown Prep. That's interesting because that's never happened before where two sitting Supreme Court justices at the same time went to the same prep school. So these are not like blue collar American where, people where, that just. Where's this? Where's this? Them, hello? Oh, where's this? Um, I missed something. Which two went to the same prep school? Gorish and Kavanaugh, the two Trump appointees. Both, Both went, went to, to Georgetown, Georgetown Prep. Prep. Okay. And, Neil Gorsuch, and also, I didn't see that Gore, 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 Gorsuch also went to Columbia. I, okay, I thought that, okay. I, I'm, yeah, okay. yeah, I'm no, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, to. yeah, Georgetown they Prep. both okay. went to Georgetown Prep. And then, of course, Kavanaugh went on to go to Georgetown University before attending Trump, uh, <laughs> Yale. Uh, then there comes this whole riff, <clears throat> largely prop propagated by QAnon who has been hinting about this in posts for quite a long time about military, military tribunals in the United States. And this is actually a key aspect of the QAnon communications and why so much of the alt-right, even in terms of so-called alternative media people, some of whom I hate to say are even my friends, have, have, have supported Trump and, and, and loudly proclaimed that we had to confirm Brett Kavanaugh. So military, let's take a look at the history of this first. Um, there was actually a thread 
uh, put out by QAnon. And this had to do with the questioning by Lindsey Graham to Brett Kavanaugh in the hearings where Graham and Kavanaugh had a back and forth on military tribunals. Have you ever met somebody so enthusiastic about denying someone their constitutional rights as Lindsey Graham, right? No, He's really. Like, I mean, so much verve and vest for it. Go listen to the, 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 go watch the video of him, this, this back and forth here. And like, you know, whenever Kavanaugh like started talking about something that didn't have to do with constitutional, like, denying constitutional rights, Lindsey, Lindsey Graham, like, let's get back to denying people their constitutional rights. <laughs> Well, <laughs> see, not actually, such a thing as constitutional but rights, even but this whatever. whole back and forth here, this is scripted. Yeah. And it's designed to redefine the parameters of law. This was put on the record for a reason. When Graham's asking him about post 9-11 and the war on terrorism, he's already invoking a pre-established meme that was set up in 2001, which goes back to the previous establishment of homeland security prior to 2001 and why that was sitting there waiting for an event to trigger it. And so Graham says, do you generally agree with the concept that says post 9-11 that we have been at war and it's called the war on terrorism? Kavanaugh says, I do because Congress passed the authorization for use of military force, which is still in effect. That was passed, of course, on September 14th, 2001, three days later after 9-11. Let's talk about law and war, says Graham. Is there a body of law called law of armed conflict? And uh, did I, did I reverse that, didn't I? Graham, let's talk about law and war. Is there a body of law called the law of armed conflict. Kavanaugh, there is such a body, Senator. Graham, a body of law that's called criminal law. Yes, Senator. Are there different differences between these two laws, between criminal law and law of armed conflict? Yes, Senator. Graham, from an American citizen's point of view, remember, you do not want to be an American citizen. That's code for slave. From an American citizen's point of view, do your constitutional rights allow you? Are we still recording? Oh, recording is paused. Oh, f something, something. We're it's the screen share thing again. How, how, uh, it's a screen share thing again, right? So, how much did we miss? We don't know. We don't know. Okay. All right. So we'll assume that this is segment two and we'll just go back to it. I'll have to edit this. All right. All right. So we're going back on to the subject of the Kavanaugh hearings and what happened in, to the United States as a result of the schismatic war that was played out over this whole confirmation hearing, which was all completely staged. So I think mine was always recording. On my side, was always recording. Because, just so you know, like when you, you, you were screen sharing that, I was seeing recording paused. So I was seeing your recording paused, but I was recording to the cloud, right? So whenever we came back, you, uh, the cloud is still here. I haven't touched anything. So we did get all that. Okay. Uh, yours was paused. So I think when you screen share on your end, because you're recording to your server, it's, uh, it's for some reason stopping it. But uh -huh. I, didn't push, I didn't push play again when you did that. And it, as soon as you stopped screen sharing, my cloud came back and it's been going the whole time. So I think we got it. Okay. Let's, okay. So let's pick up the narrative here. So the back and forth between Lindsey Graham and Kavanaugh largely has to do with two bodies of law called law, law of armed conflict and another one called criminal law. There's actually many more layers to this. Um, he goes on to ask about the constitutional rights that follow you. His example is, if you're in Paris, does the Fourth Amendment protect you as an American from your own government? From your own government, yes. So if you're in Afghanistan, do your constitutional rights protect you against your own government? If you're an American in Afghanistan, you have constitutional rights 
as against the U.S. government. These are hypotheticals. They're meaningless. They have nothing to do. These guys have gone down a rabbit trail here. Graham goes on, American citizens who collaborate with the enemy are considered enemy combatants. And this is the key to this whole thing. Kavanaugh, they can be, they're often sometimes criminally prosecuted, sometimes treated in the military, collaborated in, sometimes in the military. Let's talk about, I, I know I'm messing this narrative up. Graham says, let's talk about what it can be. I think there's a Supreme Court decision that said American citizens who collaborated with Nazi saboteurs, here we go, mm -hmm. were tried by the military. Is that correct? Graham, I think a couple of them were. Kavanaugh, yeah. So if anybody doubts that there's a long standing history in this country, that your constitutional rights follow you wherever you go, but you don't have a constitutional right to turn on your own government and collaborate with the enemy of the nation, you will be treated differently. That's what the name of the case, if you can recall that, reaffirmed the concept that you can hold one of our own as an enemy combatant as if they were engaged. This is important, if they were engaged in terrorist activities in, in Afghanistan. The back and forth here <clears throat> is coded. It's designed to mask the real intent, which has to do with the fact that you can declare a citizen an enemy combatant. Therefore, you can basically rendition them to Gitmo or anywhere else they want. This is what which is why they have to keep us in a state of war all the time so they can use the law of armed conflict so they can, yeah. Right, which they, but that's the purpose. Is it, it, it's it's more about always having the always having the option of calling someone an enemy combatant. You can only do that if you're in a constant state of armed conflict. So Americans don't understand that basically, the military has what's called the law of peace, and that was invoked. And we'll go back to screen share here. Keep your eye on that recorder. Well, if you screen share, I'll see your screen, so I won't be able to see if I'm recording. So let's see if that happens when you go to record if I lose my, my thing. Let's see. Okay. We're going back to the show notes again. Okay. And so I still have my cloud. That's, so now I don't okay. know if we had the – okay. But, so I don't, I don't know if we had it before because before when you screen shared, I was seeing your recording pause thing. Okay. Oh, we'll, get through this, we'll get through the screen share as quickly as possible. Right, but I, now, now it makes me wonder if we do have the other piece, but I never pushed play on mine again, so I, who the heck knows? Guys, this might be a mess, just letting you know. Sorry. <laughs> We're having Zoom issues. Yes, we are. Okay, so the whole point of this is largely to build the consensus there towards the idea that we can, in the United States, bring citizens before a military tribunal, as mm -hmm. Q is posting about. Mm -hmm. Because that's a Q headline there, QAnon. Lizzie Graham and Brett Kavanaugh warn the deep state gallows and Gitmo for traitors coming. Guess they get to decide who are traitors, right? So we're good, we're still recording. Okay, but, right. but now, but because I didn't get your recording pause thing this time, it makes me wonder what was happening. I, I so we may not have that. Who the heck we'll knows? Don't worry about it. But we'll, we'll figure it out. Later. Okay. I'll go back and. Um, so my whole point in all of this is this: they ha they are building a consensus, and this is actually now when you go back and look at history. I'm going to do one more share here real quickly, because I want people to see this. And this puts the icing on the cake of history right here. The quote from CNN, yes, it's CNN. Is Donald Trump right about military tribunals? Dateline on that Tuesday, August 16th, 2016. This is candidate Trump. And he's talking about the Military Commissions Act of 2006, which limits military tribunal trials to non-citizens only. 
Okay. So what this has to do is that Trump recommends that the U.S. citizens accused of terrorism be prosecuted before military tribunals. Candidate Trump. Okay, Go ahead. Which tells you, like, if, if obviously, if like, like, what is wrong with prosecuting them in criminal in, in a regular criminal court, right? Obviously, well, the popular mantra has to do with the prosecution. Well, let's take a prime example: Hillary Clinton, which I think all of us would like to see arrested, perp walked, given the first who I class think trial, a fine full of cigarettes, and. But that's not who he's talking about. He's talking it's not about who he's talking Jones. about. Yeah. This is where they reverse everything back on mm -hmm. us. Because what they're really talking about is establishing the groundwork for military tribunals as a basis for anybody who's seen as an enemy combatant, even citizens inside the United States. Right. It's about, and they want to do it in the military tribunal so it can be secret. So well, it can be secret. They don't yeah. have to reveal state secrets. They yeah. do not have to follow standard protocol for case. The, the, the level of proof necessary in a military tribunal is much smaller. It's basically the opinion of the officers that serve on that tribunal. None of this falls under constitutional law. It all falls under a uniform code of military justice inside of the offices of the judge advocate general. So you've now removed jurisdiction from all courts of common appeal and moved it into a military court where everything is absolute and there is no longer appeal or rebuttal for the largest part. You have the right to a defense attorney, but you may not have the right to have your evidence seen or heard as a result of being in that, in that tribunal. And there's a historical precedent for all this, which is exactly where I want to go with this because I want people to understand this has been done before. And one more time, I'll risk the screen share here so that we can see this. And this is an old script. When the Southern states walked out of Congress on March 27th, 1861, the quorum to conduct business under the Constitution was lost. Congress was adjourned, synodia without a day. Lincoln could not legally reconvene Congress because the lawful deliberative body ceased to exist. First executive order by any, Lincoln wrote the first executive order by any president, executive order one, April 15th, 1861. When Congress was reconvened, it was under the military authority of the commander in chief and not by rules of order for parliamentary bodies or by constitutional law, thereby replacing, thereby placing the American people under martial law. Okay, does that chill you yet? Does that make you feel good out there? You people who are rallying around this ridiculous QAnon bullshit. I heard John B. Wells from coast to coast on the SGT report yep. last week, echoing all of this, this yeah. whole echo chamber. Yeah, that, was, he was kind of a smart guy. I know he's conservative. I know he's really Christian, but he's deceived by this. He's well, the same, the, 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 same, narrative. the same, that's, always, that's been my thing with Sean from SGT report, who I think, I mean, I've never talked to him or met him, but in general has always seemed like a nice guy who's done tons of good work, some of which I have very much enjoyed. Like, I don't understand. I mean, this is more, we're doing this for over a year now, the QAnon stuff. And one of the things I've noticed, not so much when he's interviewing someone and talking about Q, but when he's making a video where he's just talking about the QAnon posts, he speaks with a certain rhythm that he never used to speak with and never does otherwise than when he's speaking about something different than QAnon or Hillary Clinton. And to me, the, the whatever, I don't even know what the right word is, but like something in the way he's speaking to me sounds like mind control script running. You know what I mean? And I just, I like, I, this is not, Sean, if you ever, for some reason hear this, which I doubt you would, I said, I, I, I appreciate so much of your work. I'm worried about what's going on here with this. You know, I'm just worried about, you know, and, and John, John Wells, I love so much of what John Wells says, but like, guys, like this, there is like this, all of this is, you know, designed to help people fall back into a further state of belief and authority. Well, you know, even what I just read there in, in that, that last screenshot, you have to understand something. 
1861, the United States of America, the organic body that existed under the originally founded doctrines of uh, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation, those all went out the window. Everything that you have had since then has been done under color of law and continues to be done under color of law. There is no path back from this. Most people are looking at Donald Trump and the uprising, the alt-right thinking, they have a path back to this. They don't. It is broken. It cannot be repaired. Furthermore, well, the alt-right, like the real alt-right is not interested in freedom or, or, uh, um, or constitutional rights or anything like that. The alt-right thinks they are. Well, the, the alt-right is something totally different. People don't so, even understand what the real alt-right is for the most part. People supporting Trump in mainstream America think he's a conservative. He is not. No. He's a neoliberal. Go look up mm -hmm. the definition of a neoliberal to understand what this is. Ultimately, what everyone in our about. government is ultimately a neocon or a neoliberal, and those two yeah. are not very far apart. No, those, those definitions are all meaningless anyway. I mean, I consider myself a liberal in the old school sense of the Democratic Party that at one time existed in my grandfather's day, but certainly not now and certainly not since the 1960s. But the biggest thing to look at here is you now have a Supreme Court stacked with Jesuits. I did an interview, and I need to put this out again. I did an interview back when I was doing Threshing Floor with a researcher from Canada named C.T. Wilcox. We did a whole show where he expounded on how the Jesuits have been the insurgents into disrupting the Republic and the experiment that was the United States and how they started the Ku Klux Klan, they staged the arguments for the Civil War, they set up all of the little tripwires that went into the establishment of this bogus fiat government that came as a result of what Lincoln did in 1861. They're all back in power again. And I don't think most of these people are intellectually honest or smart enough or historically brief to understand exactly what mechanism they are tripping. Because we're told our enemies are Nazis, communists, Russians, Jews, Zionists. The Jesuits have been around for 500 years. They are the military arm of the Vatican, and they operate as a covert worldwide intelligence agency and counterinsurgency against freedom people who would operate against the interests of the theological system espoused by the Vatican. So all of you are now serving the Pope, the Black Pope, and all of his vassals across the planet in taking apart what few threads of freedom you still have in this country. And I am ashamed to say this, that many of you people in the alternative media, including John B. Wells, you're not just wrong, you're dead wrong, and you're leading yourself and most of your listeners down a path to destruction of the last fundamental rights that we still have in this country, and the innocent who don't know any better. You guys need to smarten up. I'm not sure I have anything else to say after that. Yeah. We were going to go into some other stuff, but I think maybe we'll spend, we'll, we'll, uh, I think we'll let this stand for right yeah. now. There's other things. So there's other things we're going to do. And some of this does go back into QAnon and some of the codes and things that are being generated by Q mm -hmm. and some of the analysis that I'm doing and some of the projects that came before it. But, I really want to let this pro I, I want to let this video stand and like we're going to push this out and to our Patreon people, we're putting the show out whole cloth to YouTube because I want to run the record and I want to thank you people for supporting us when we do things like this, yes. for letting us take material that is deservedly yours because you help us and putting it out for the public to view without having to go through the Patreon system. For you people who view this YouTube video in the public domain, why don't you step over and support us? Three bucks, five bucks a month. It's not a lot. It's coffee. It's whatever. And uh, we're inspired now to push forward this year 
And uh, I think we're in a major arc where we're going to see some ripping material come out of our planet radio. So thanks to our Patreons, uh, the people that support us morally, financially, spiritually, health support wise, all of it. We love you. Yep. You know. All right, guys, thank you so much. And we will be back real soon with another Off Planet Radio. He's Randy Moggins. I'm Emily Moyer. The truth is out there. It's inside of you. We'll see you next time. Ooh. It's not in the QA nonsense. It's not. <laughs> All right, guys. Or the Kevin nonsense. Or the Kevin nonsense. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye. I'm going to go down, 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 I'm going